So we are now going to graph y equals 3, bracket 2, negative x plus 2. Whoa, that's a bad little bracket. There we go. Can you see the base graph, the parent graph? It's an exponential because the x is an exponent. What's the base of this graph? 2. So there's our base graph. We can draw a quick little sketch of it off to the side. It's going to be increasing because of the 2. It's going to go through the point 0, 1 and 1, 2 with an asymptote at y equals 0. So then once we take those three points, or sorry, those two points and the asymptote, now on this one, before we go and do things, notice that we have a horizontal reflection and a horizontal translation. Anything that's in the place where the exponent was will always affect your graph horizontally. And when you have a reflection and a translation, you always have to have it in factored form. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this, factor out that negative, so that it's negative x minus 2. What's the 3 in front going to do? Oh, let's highlight again. So we don't, that's part of our base graph. Those aren't going to affect our transformations. So the 3, what's that going to affect, x or y? The y, and you're going to multiply your y by 3. Is x going to get multiplied by anything? It's going to get multiplied by negative 1. So you notice just like before, we do both the x and the y for the multiplications together. I'm going to get 0, 3 and negative 1, 6. Then the next number is the minus 2, meaning that it's going to get shifted 2 to the right. This one isn't moved up or down. So move both those points to the right. And finally, think about your asymptote. The only way your asymptote's going to get affected is if your graph gets moved <coughs> up or down. This graph didn't get moved up or down, so your asymptote is still at y equals 0. So now when we go to graph this one, start with your asymptote and label it y equals 0. Two comma three. One comma six. As I join these two together, it's going down, so it's going to approach the asymptote over here and go up over there. And we've drawn our graph. After we've drawn it, we should see does the general shape make sense? If I think about my original graph here in green, first of all, I multiplied my y by 3, which stretched it vertically. And then when I multiply my x by a negative, that's going to reflect it over the y-axis. So it should be decreasing like it is here when it started increasing. And then we move it two to the right, and that seems to match up with the graph that we have. For part b, we can now answer a bunch of these questions. Is it increasing or decreasing? This one's decreasing. The intercepts, well it has no x-intercept, but if we wanted to find the y-intercept, because we didn't actually label a y-intercept on our graph, we find a y-intercept by plugging in 0 for x. If I plug in 0 for x, 
I'm going to get 3, 2 to the power 2, which will be 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So your y-intercept will be at 12. The equation of the asymptote we already know did not change. It's at y equals 0. The domain is everything, and the range is bigger than or equal to 0. Oh, sorry. I did that twice, didn't I? You guys are good. Just bigger than 0. Question number 10 is a good one for practice. 